Hi, hello everyone. Today we are going to see a mysterious poem, The House on Elm Street, written by Nadia Bush. The poet talks about a lonely house. The poet fills us with the feeling of mystery about the house, which is lonely, unknown house, a big house, but there is nothing. See the video. What happened there is still today unknown. It's a very mysterious place. And inside you can tell it has a ton of space. But at the same time it is bad to the bone. It sat alone. What happened there is still today unknown. It is a very mysterious place and inside you can tell it has a ton of space but at the same time it is bare to the bone. Here it represents a house. A house. What happened there is still today unknown. What do you mean by that? What is happening inside the house is not known to the poet. It is a very mysterious place. It here represents the house. The house is a very mysterious place. And inside you can tell it has a ton of space. A ton of space means a lot of space, large space. And inside the house you can see there is a lot of space but at the same time it is bad to the bone bad to the bone means completely empty at the same time one can see that the house is vacant and nobody is living there let's move to the next stanza after saying about the vacant house which remains a mystery to all the poet says about uh, the house at night alive at night light scene the poet wants to get inside the house but he is afraid watch the video at night the house seems to be alive lights flicker on and off i am often tempted to go to the house to just take a look and see what it is really about but fear takes over me at night the house seems to be alive. Lights flicker on and off. I am often tempted to go to the house to just take a look and see what is really about. But fear takes over me. At night, at the, during the night time, the house seems to be alive, seems to be active. Lights flicker on and off. Flicker means burning unsteadily. One can see the lights flickering on and off, burning unsteadily as on and off. I am often tempted to go to the house. I means here the poet. She is tempted to go inside the house to see, to just take a look and see what it is really about. Very often the poet is tempted to go inside the house uh, as to get in and see what is really happening there. But she is filled with fear. Let's move to the third stanza. Which deals with the driving. While driving. Driving at summer is bright and the mind of the poet imagines things. The poet's mind arouses chains of thoughts in his mind. Let's see the video. seems to be a bit brighter on this warm summer day in May. It plays with your mind to me, I say. It is one of a kind. I drive past the house almost every day. The house seems to be a bit brighter on this warm summer day in May. It plays with your mind to me, I say. It is one of a kind. 
I drive past the house almost every day. Every day the poet goes in his vehicle that is car passes the house. During this summer in May, the house seemed to be a little brighter. The house seems to be a bit brighter on this warm summer day in May. That is on the warm summer uh, in May, the house looks to be brighter while he drives in his vehicle and he looks at the house. It plays with your mind. To me, I say it is one of a kind. So, it plays with your mind. You also thinking strange about the house. The same thing to me also arises in, in my mind as a chain of thoughts. So, the poet says to himself that this house has something strange and secret in it. He feels that it is a different kind of house. Let's move to the fourth stanza that deals about a tree. The tree which doesn't grow and there is no leaves but it is alive. The tree is also mysterious. So, watch the video. Beside the house sits a tree. It never grows leaves. Not in the winter, spring, summer or fall. It just sits there, never getting small or ever growing tall. How could this be? So, here the poet says about a tree. Beside the house, beside means near, near the house there is a tree. It never grows leaves. The tree is bare. There are no leaves on the tree. Not in the winter, spring, summer or fall. Fall means autumn season. Okay. Uh, so, the all the seasons, there is no single leaf found in the tree. It just sits there, never getting small or ever growing tall. So, the tree does not grow tall or does not uh, uh, grow short. It remains unchanging forever. How can a tree live without growing? The poet is filled with surprise. Let's move to the last stanza, which deals with the opinion of the people. They spread rumor that the house is fading. It is a mystery house. Watch the video. Rumors are constantly being made. And each day the house just begins to fade. What happened inside that house? I really don't know. I guess it will always be a mystery. Rumors are constantly being made. And each day the house just begins to fade. What happened inside that house? I really don't know. I guess it will always be a mystery. Rumors. Who will spread rumors? People. Rumors means false information. Okay. Constantly being made. Constantly being made means they are saying often. Often rumors are spreading. And each day the house just begins to fade. What they are saying? The house is fading. They whispered everywhere. They spread rumors that the house is fading everywhere. What happened inside that house? I really don't know. What is happening inside that house? Nobody knows. Okay. Then, I guess it will always be a mystery. Till now, I don't know what is going on inside the house. The house remains strange and secretive. It is a mystery to all. So, the poet imagines the house to be a mysterious. Where is the house? The house is on the Elm Street.
understood that poem now let's see the literal devices used in this poem first one is alliteration what do you mean by alliteration repetition of sounds here bit bright like that it comes next one is synector synector means a part represents a big part that is bat to the bone like that that is a synector that is the next literary device we are going to see is paradox paradox means contradict in ideas that is opposite in ideas here never grows leaves never getting small never growing tall these and all paradox in this poem next is onomatopoeia onomatopoeia means imitating sound here lights flicker so flicker on and off we had seen no, that the flicker it is called as onomatopoeia next one is rhetorical device that is how could this be question asking questions that is rhetorical device thanks for watching subscribe share and comment if you like the video